A year and a half ago, my wife and I, we went down to Mexico City. We booked an entire home, but the host took an hour of his day to meet with us. He talked us through everything that was great about his neighborhood. The best coffee shops, he talked us through the best restaurants, he talked us through everything that would make us feel like we belonged. He also gave us one recommendation. Visit the Frida Kahlo Museum. This is where she was born, this is where she died. She also lived there with her husband, Diego Rivera, another very influential Mexican artist. This visit set my wife and I down a different path in our lives. We got incredibly inspired by where they lived. We got incredibly inspired by you know, what their space looked like and what inspired them. But what was really, really interesting is we came back to San Francisco and we started seeing Frida everywhere. She'd always been there in the street arts and the mural, but for the first time, we really started to notice this and we started asking a lot more questions about Frida. And it got us thinking a lot more about San Francisco's art. So this one trip and this one act of hospitality set us down a path that, never, that we never came back from. We're actually still on that trip because we're learning about our own city and the art in our own city. Something else happened uh, when we got back from Mexico City. Six months ago, we had a long-term guest check-in. Unfortunately, this long-term guest did not read the house rules. She makes a lot of noise after 10 p.m. So, unfortunately, we had to move, but a new house is a new canvas. It's a new way for us to express ourselves. And we wanted an Airbnb unit, and we were still so inspired by Mexico City that we decided to make our new unit in memory of Frida Kahlo. And we took all the local art, though, from shops in our local neighborhood. And our hope is to welcome people into our home and share with them art of San Francisco because maybe they'll go back to their own home and they'll be way more inspired about the art in their city. I also host for another reason, and that is to make sure that I stay connected to the joys and challenges of hosting. Our, our mission on our product development team is to make it incredibly easy to be a successful host. We think technology can take care of a lot of the heavy lifting of being a host. However, technology will never be able to do one thing, which is provide a human experience. We want to make it so easy with the technology that you can focus on that. But even though I'm a host, I don't want to be a focus group of one. So the most important thing that we do is that we listen to you. And here are just a handful of ways that we listen to you. First, we use data science. We see how you use the website. We see how you use the mobile app. For example, we know that 65% of reservations, you use mobile. So that tells us, and this is trending up, so that tells us that we need to do a lot more to make sure our mobile apps are world class. Next, we run a quality survey. Each one of you should be getting a survey at least once a year, but we're looking at tens of thousands of results every month. And we're looking at the data constantly. And I, I make time to also read through all the comments. But data tells us what happened. It doesn't tell us why. It doesn't tell us where we should be going. And that's when we send a research team into your home to spend time with you. We try to understand you and your natural hosting habitat. We try to understand what kind of computer do you use and where do your guests check in. We try to understand all your pain points. I want to give you an example of this with a video. So let's roll the video. There's things I find much easier on the laptop than the mobile. Part of it may be my age, that I'm, I'm not um, you know, part of the 20-something uh, generation that tends to be more mobile-oriented. Mm -hmm. um, but I really like looking at my um, Google Calendar, and I like looking at the calendar view um, on Airbnb on a laptop screen. Versus the calendar on your phone, the Airbnb calendar on your phone. That's, you know, I could get an iPhone 6 with the bigger screen, or I could use an iPad like everyone else in my family has, but I, I like seeing the calendar on that side screen. Okay, great. That's really good context for us to know. <laughs> and so it's 80% laptop, 20% phone. And I will, if I'm out, if I'm in the house, I will almost always use this. I like my phone primarily to um, 
let me know the minute I get an Airbnb communication. But if it's an inquiry, then I will. it'll be my trigger to go to the laptop if I'm home. And if I'm not home, I'll respond to the person and say, uh, I'm, I, I'll, I'm uh, busy, I'll get back to you in three hours with a response. When you're back at your computer, you mean? We'll talk about the calendar in a bit. Um, next, host voice. This is, another way we, this is another way that we listen to you. We let you vote on what the next feature should be, and we use that information to prioritize what we build for you. We also do meetups. We have hosts all over the we have employees all over the world that run host meetups. Whenever I visit another city, I always do a host meetup. And you'll see me on my phone. I assure you I'm not checking email. And you'll see me over the next two days on my phone a lot. It's not email. I'm taking notes. And these are actually notes from a meetup in New York. Finally, there's the Airbnb open. This is our real-time conversation with you to help understand what your needs are. And this is also a time where we launch a few things and get your feedback on the same day. I'll give you an example. Last year, we launched the host dashboard at last year's Airbnb Open. This is the home screen that you see when you log in on web or you log in on mobile. We got your feedback. We had a lot of positive feedback, but we got a lot of suggestions. For example, one of the things that we heard is that you want to see statistics about your reviews and how they break down. So last June, we launched that to you. We also heard something different. On your dashboard, your upcoming reservations, we heard three different things. Some of you wanted to see it by day, some of you wanted to see it by month, and some of you wanted to see it by listing. So we came up with a solution for that. We're happy to announce that now you can organize and filter your listings by day, by month, and by listing. And this ships today to exclusively to host at the Airbnb Open. And we want to get your feedback over the next day. And this is just one of several announcements we're going to make today. We're going to talk about ways that you can learn from each other, ways that you can make it easier to host without more effort, and also how you can welcome more guests and feel confident you're getting great guests.